Now let's open up a brand new notebook and we're just going to play around with some of the concepts we saw in, in class and in the tutorials. So notice first when you type in LS, that's just a list and notice that's a list of the things that are over there in the file browser. And CD is choose directory, so we're going to choose the scripts directory. That's the same as double clicking there. And now we're going to choose the examples directory. So you can see the examples directory is inside of the scripts directory. And CD that, that's the same as double clicking over there. Only doing it in the notebook means that we can now load each one of these things into the notebook. And that's what we're actually going to do. We're going to use a Python magic called load. And this will just give us some experience with some of the routines that you see in uh, that we'll be working with in Python. So first off, let's just look at some of their examples. If we look at the NFL analysis, then notice the load command actually creates a new cell with the program in that next cell. And now if we shift enter in the next cell, it runs the program. So we entered an entire program into a cell and, and didn't really have to do anything. So we have to wait for the kernel to finish running. Again, the paid are a little bit faster. Now, then it produced a, a lot of analysis and a lot of plots. And we can actually see those plots if we go to the plot window. Then you see it says NHL, but that, somebody does a typo. It should be NFL. And you'll see when we open it here, yeah, those are NFL plots. So and what it's looking at is uh, how the football season influences the birth rate. And you can go down through there and, and see how the U.S. birth rate is uh, impacted by the NFL season. Now I changed this from a code to uh, a markdown cell. So we're going to look at this example. And notice what I'm doing. This is a markdown cell. So up there on the pull down, I changed it to markdown. And now I'm actually entering uh, just standard LaTeX. Negative 1 to the K, a fraction, so 4 over 2K plus 1. And this is actually what's called Gregory series. So we're just going to use Python just for fun. So it's not going to be turned in or anything, but just for fun, let's write a short little program and calculate partial sums of Gregory series. Let n be 100. We're going to do the n equals 100 partial sum, approximation 0. And notice that in Python, indexing starts at 0, just like in math. For instance, Taylor series, Maclaurin series, they also start. At zero, so you'll find that math uh, that Python is very math friendly. Now we do approximation plus equals, and what this does is takes the current value of approximation and updates it by adding whatever that formula gives us. And of course, the formula is just the term that we're adding over. And once we've run this, we're going to print. And we got negative forty-seven. Why? Because we forgot to import the future. Remember that in Python 2.7, division is integer division. And so if we want division of integers to return decimals, we have to remember to do from future import division. Now once everything is moved over to Python 3, we won't have to do that. And notice when now we run it again, that's a little better. That's for n equals 100, for n equals 1,000. Now that looks familiar. For n equals 10,000. That looks pretty good. So we've got a pretty powerful system here in Wakari. You know, we're getting some pretty good approximations here. And it's running pretty quick, faster than uh, a lot of PCs. Okay, I'm going to just delete a couple of cells. I'm just kind of cleaning stuff up. And then I'm going to create a new cell down there. Now we're going to do another example. I thought we'd just explore the, the subset sum problem. 
I use the subset subproblem as sort of an example of what you run into in, in big data. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to import combinations. So this will create all the subsets of a certain order. Then we're going to enter a set. So notice how I got S equals in the squiggly bracket 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Let's put a couple of repetitions in there. Because it's a set, what you're going to see is that there's only going to be one copy of the 3 and one copy of the 1. So let's look at what set looks like. And notice it's just 1, 2, 3, 5, 7. Because set has the property that each element is unique. Unlike a list where you can have repeated. So now let's look at the combinations, S, 3. So this is all the subsets of uh, size 3 that we could get from this set S. If you just run the command combinations, then you just get an, an iterator. You actually get a program that will produce them one at a time. If we wrap that with list, then this will actually run the iterator and produce all of them. So you're about to see that. So there they are. Now we're going to define a program, and I just copy and pasted this in. But let's notice how it works. So I'm going to change this to a markdown, and so I can give you a little commentary here. So the function that we just entered actually will solve the subset sum problem. Now again, I like the subset sum problem because it gives you an idea of what happens when you try to write algorithms for very large data sets without thinking about the possibility that they might be slow. So because when things are slow, when you're working with big data, it, we're often talking centuries instead of uh, minutes or hours. So the subset sum problem, you'll notice that we have a loop for k, all the sets of size k, uh, all the subsets of size k, we generate them one at a time. And for each subset, we add it to see if it adds up to zero. And then if it does, we simply return it and we're done. So notice we're only testing for the existence of a subset that sums to zero. We're not finding the largest. Typically in big data problems, as we'll see in the next lecture series, we're looking for the biggest. So let's apply the subset summer to some data sets here, just to see how it works. So it's pretty easy to see that uh, this should produce the one and negative one as the set uh, subset that sums to zero. Here we're going to enter several numbers, 1 up through 7. Sorry, I can't type. And then we're going to put in the negative of that sum. So what should uh, be produced is the entire set. Because any 2 won't add up to 0, but the entire set does add up to 0. And sure enough, the subset summer produces that. I noticed that both cases, this was pretty quick. I mean, we really wouldn't say at this point that there's anything any different than any other program you might write. So let's look at another set here. Again, runs nice and quick. Uh, we can also apply it to uh, a randomly generated set. So notice that we're going to do that for sets, first off, we're going to start with sets of size 12. So S here is going to be a randomly generated set. But notice it might have 0 in there, so the dot difference 0 simply removes 0 if 0 is in the set. So we run it. There's the set, and it says there, there are none in the set, no subsets that add to 0. And now we do it for 14, now for 16, and it's running pretty fast, right? 
Now we do it for 18. Uh oh. Okay. Well, that was not fast. At least not in the, the sense that we think of. And what's happening here is that it's slowing down exponentially. So, in other words, the amount of time to find the answer is growing exponentially. So let's put now, say, 20 in here. And what's going to happen with n equals 20? Well, what happens with n equals 20? Well, you guessed it. It increased exponentially the amount of time it's going to take to process. That took a lot longer, didn't it? And it's slowing down exponentially fast. So this is a... Now we're up to a, a set S of size 22. And we're going to run our algorithm. And you can probably, probably guess that uh, we're not going to waste any more video time on this. This one will take a very, 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 very long time. I notice in here is only 22. So in essence, you could say the time is changing by about a factor of 10. So 22 is about 10 times slower than 20.